despite the forecast for grey cold weather all this week, we've woken up to a lovely day. We're desperate to get cruising on our way to Ellesmere Port. Mm -hmm. But we've got a few domestic chores to do. There's a laundrette right near the boat. So all the beds have been stripped, or the bed has been stripped. <laughs> and the big laundry that Edna, our little washing machine, can't cope with is being done. As soon as that's back, hopefully the weather will hold and we'll be off for a, a cruise. Yep, just a few miles, halfway between here, Chester, and uh, Ellesmere Port. And it would appear that a lot of people don't bother to go this far, is that right? As far as Ellesmere Port, yeah, it's, it's the, the, the view from here to there isn't exactly uh, pretty in places. So well, we'll decide that. We'll decide that, yes. But yeah, we're looking forward to whatever it is. It's a lovely day, we're looking forward to a cruise. The uh, good thing about Ellesmere Port is, is the National Boat Narrowboat Museum is there, so really looking forward to that. And uh, might show you some of it. Fran's going to get just outside the hotel behind here at uh, the basin, Ellesmere Port. The wind's blowing a gale across there so it's going to be interesting for us to see how she does it. I'm going to watch along with you guys. <laughs> It doesn't help that there's a sunken boat just over there. Ah, oh, she's done really good. Right in front of us is the Manchester Ship Canal and just behind that is the estuary of the River Mersey. Apparently it's almost two miles wide at that point. <laughs> you remember the days, Rich? <laughs> Welcome to the 1830s house. That's what we need on the boat, Fran. Yeah, a dolly. There we go, easy. Brush your smalls with that. Brush your bigs in that as well. And what's this? We actually had one of these in our last house in Norfolk and for a while didn't even know what it was for. And it's um, 
a boiler. So you light the fire down below and uh, heat your water up for your washing. And we actually had a washing room at our last cottage and didn't know initially that's what it was for. Fortunately, because we didn't know, Rich didn't make me use it. Huh. <laughs> it's exactly like this, wasn't it? Exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. How's that friend? Good. We often get asked how we get Wi-Fi on the boat and it's pretty simple really. We use one of these devices. It's a mobile data receiver and um, it relies on there being a 4G signal wherever you are there's a slot in the side for a SIM card, just like your mobile phone. And uh, that converts the 4G signal to Wi-Fi. Uh, we're in a contract at the moment with EE. We're paying far too much for it. It's a two year contract and it ends this month. So we'll be swapping that out with another provider. So we uh, often moor up in the middle of the countryside and uh, where there's no 4G signal. So we don't stream, we don't upload videos, we can't watch films or whatever on TV and because um, we don't have a television. Uh, so, you know, we do other things, read books, listen to music, etc. Uh, so yeah, that's how we get Wi-Fi on board. Simple. We use a car windscreen phone holder to put it by the window to get uh, the best reception. A lot of people have external omnidirectional aerials on top of their roof um, because they really need data because they work from their boat or whatever or they really need to stream films. We don't bother. If we haven't got a signal, we haven't got a signal and uh, sometimes we're quite relieved that we haven't got a signal. Yeah. We're coming up the locks with Ian who we met at Crick Boat Show last year and uh, he's come over from New Zealand and bought his boat from Aintree Boats in Liverpool and to get to Chester he actually crossed the River Mersey piloted so really brave for a newbie and it's good to see him again Ian says that we're responsible for him doing this I'm not going to feel guilty because it's a great way of life well, that is a long way down That was a bit easier than the last time, Fran, that going a, down. That was a doddle. I know I'm an expert now, but it's so much easier with two of you, two boats, and um, when you know what you're doing. <laughs> We're going to moor up in a minute and uh, get some shopping and stuff. Boring stuff, yeah, yeah. shopping and shopping. and <laughs> We've got no food on the boat again, so and there's a... We haven't visited the market in Chester now yet and it's supposed to be a lovely um, market full of vegetables and green grocery and all sorts of stuff. There's also a zero waste shop which yes. I need to go to where you can take your own containers and fill it, fill it get weighed and filled so we'll have a look at that. With stuff like oats and nuts and seeds, seeds. and cereals and yeah. fruit. So we really need to, while we're somewhere like that, make the most of it and stock up with as much stuff that we can and then we'll be out in the countryside again which is nice <coughs>
one's pound. No, that's, that's okay. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Can I just hold my brick for you? Yeah. So your, your brick, that one there goes like that, okay? This is my Lego brick <laughs> for part of the Chester Cathedral model. That's going on here. And the workman will put it on the model later. I do believe you put it the so. wrong way around, though. No, I haven't, have I? Well, you have, yes. That's because I didn't have my glasses. <laughs> right, check two. There we go. Yeah. And it's identical to that section there. And you're right, it was real where the little workmen are standing. Yeah. Right. And that's going to go where the little workmen are standing over there. So here we are in Chester Cathedral. We're in the chapter house just outside the cloisters. It's beautiful, isn't it? This is apparently where the monks had their business meetings. <laughs> um, it's an incredible place. The history, the beautiful windows, the mosaics, just mm. amazing, isn't it? And we're so lucky in this country that we've got so many old churches and cathedrals. This was established in 1092 as a Benedictine abbey, but was uh, rebuilt in the Gothic style that it is now in about 1250, and it took 275 years to complete. Uh, absolutely incredible, and there's still lots of the old uh, Romanesque building from the 11th century here. It's it is costing wonderful. about is it 5,500 5, pounds, pounds a day to maintain and uh, and it's free to come around it's all voluntary donations for all sorts of things in here but yeah. it's uh, and every cathedral we visit as well they're different this one although it's a beautiful beautiful building it's quite simple in many ways it's not laden with gold and luxurious stuff is it it's no but the, the building and the windows and the floor is just amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, made with local sandstone. Yeah, superb. The cathedral bells were rehung in this tower in 1975. I guess because they were getting too heavy for the Cathedral Tower itself. This is known as the Rose. It uh, dates back to the 13th century. And uh, it's two rows of shops, one on the ground floor and one at the first floor level. And originally this street is the Baker's Rose where the bakers would uh, have their shops. But it's Victorianised in the 19th century, but uh, there are still elements left of the original medieval buildings. We're in the Roman amphitheatre, apparently the biggest in Britain. It was built in the early first century and completed to hold 7,000 spectators in the uh, third century. And uh, they used to have a room for the wild animals and we're in the actual gladiatorial arena bit now. That's amazing that so much of it is still here. And we've got Fran on the tethering stone. I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. <laughs> Fancy a wrestle. Oh, the blood that was spilt here. Chia seeds for the bread because we've discovered that you put them in the bread mixture and it makes it really, really nice and they're supposed to be so good for you. Florence. 
So we're on our way out of Chester now, having done the full tour of Chester and also Ellesmere Port. Um, spent some time going around the Waterways Museum at Ellesmere Port. Really worthwhile. Um, it's worth doing that trip down there if you're on a boat. Fantastic museum, all sorts of stuff in there. And yeah. I think our ticket lasts us a whole year. Yeah, it does. So if we're stuck for things to do, we might have another day back there. Who knows? So that was that. That was a great uh, few days we spent up at Ellesmere Port. And uh, how was your dry January, Fran? <laughs> dry January was okay. The last week was a little bit of a struggle. There were a couple of days when I could have really done with a beer. But I, for one, managed to hold off. <laughs> how I about you? I, <laughs> I cracked on the 25th of January uh, after our stressful day going down the Northgate staircase locks. Any old excuse. I'm a weak, weak man. You I are. Know. <laughs> because I was the one stuck in the locks. But I still managed to have, um, I think I had an alcohol-free beer you did? that night yes, in the pub or that did. afternoon. Which you could have done. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it ain't as nice as proper anyway, beer. Anyway, it's February now. So I held off until we were back in Chester. And um, thoroughly enjoyed my first beer of the year. So thanks for watching and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. And hit that notifications bell so you get uh, notified of when the next video comes up. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And please keep your comments coming. We do try to respond to as many as possible. Some slip through the net, but we love reading everything and we'll comment whenever we can. So. Brilliant. And thank you for watching.